You're listening to What She Said, a podcast for creatives and new bloggers hosted by me, Lucy Sharif, a freelance journalist and blogger living in London. In this episode, I chat to Siobhan Watts, who runs the website Bless the Weather. She is a photographer and a blogger and a writer, and she also teaches people to knit, amongst other things. We talk all about juggling parenting and work how to create your own path instead of following someone else's and why authenticity is so important um, and how she became a freelance photographer. Um, it's a really interesting episode if you're the sort of person that wants to see how you can transition from an in inverted commas normal day job into a completely different freelance career. I started my blog probably seven and a half years ago mm-hmm. almost so you know pretty old school Um, I started it because I was reading loads of blogs at the time, Um, a a lot of ones actually now that the people don't even update them anymore, Um, but I just got really inspired by them and they were sort of travel recipes, photography, and I remember thinking after reading them for about six months, like, oh yeah, I could do that, and thinking that it seemed like so much fun to have it. I've always sort of been into like uh not scrapbooking in like the crafty sense but just you know keeping records of all my holidays and my friends and just stuff like that um ever since I was a kid so it sort of seemed like a a natural fit for me to do something like that online um and at the time I didn't have a digital camera I'd sort of lost my way a bit with photography that I'd done when I was a bit younger and in um for a level and then kind of on the side at university but it was always film and I got a little bit lost with digital I just didn't I just didn't get into it you know mm. it didn't have the romance for me and, and I just sort of lost my way with it and I didn't have the money to upgrade my kit or anything like that anyway yeah. so I sort of stopped doing that for a long time and then I started my blog um it was in the Christmas actually I was having a really hard time with my family there was lots going on and it was a bit of a sanctuary for me um and my dad had just got me a digital SLR for my birthday a few months before that um just like an entry level one it was like the Canon 450 um and I was terrible really terrible I didn't have to use it I had the kit lens and honestly if I showed you the first picture I put on there it's it's horrible I'm gonna make sure it's deleted so no one can see it it was terrible um yeah and I I remember thinking you know I want to hold myself accountable like I want to get better uh, I'd always loved writing and photography but I just lost my way um you know because I was in my mid-20s and that's sort of what what you do really yeah definitely what I did anyway (laughs) and I just wanted something to put it out there because I thought that would make me keep it up yeah and you know seven and a half years later turns out (laughs) it turns out it worked yeah (laughs) um so it was just that really I started off terrible I and I got better because I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it and you know seven and a half years is a long time yeah um and it's changed I had a, a few different names back then I can't even remember what they were And if I could, I probably wouldn't tell you. Yes. Um, Yeah, I just, you know, it was just a different world back then, wasn't it? There was no Instagram. There was no any of this stuff. And it was so naive and innocent and um, very different. And I used to shoot in, like, artificial light and... Oh, it gives me chills. Make you cringe. Shudders thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> I just didn't know any better, and yeah. it's amazing now, like how much people know, even with their iPhone. You know, mm. someone who wouldn't even call themselves a photographer, yeah, um, just can take great pictures because they just know more. It's more out there. Um, yeah, so I just got better and better, and then Instagram, and I, I just kept doing it basically, and and I. Um, started trying to do a bit of photography more seriously and I guess with that just by writing more and honing my skills more I guess you stop trying to find your voice you sort of just realize that you have it already yeah. and you find it easier to think about what you want to write about and everything feels a bit more natural but mm-hmm. it takes a very long time to get to that place yeah it's really interesting when you say that seven years ago obviously it was a lot of it was much more of an innocent time for blogging and a social media obviously was completely different what do you do you f- find that kind of nowadays this, there's a lot more stumbling blocks um for new bloggers I mean can you imagine if you started your journey out now I feel like it's easier in a way because mm. it's easier to get yourself out there I feel like on Instagram you know it's fairly not easy that I don't mean to say it's easy but you can on Instagram with the right kind of strategies 
get yourself noticed. Yeah. Whereas back then I felt like it was very difficult to get yourself noticed and you could, you know, it was all about commenting on people's blogs and yeah. it would take such a long time to start commenting and then you'd go through the rabbit warren of finding these other blogs and connecting with them in the same way that people do with Instagram. But obviously it wasn't as instant. Yeah. It was leaving quite long comments and it was just very, very different. But then also there wasn't the wealth of um, very professional looking bloggers and instagrammers out there yeah um and you didn't know like you didn't start a blog with the intention to do anything with it other than just to do it yeah and just to sort of have a record of your life I suppose or put your pictures up there and hope that it would connect with people it was lots about Flickr and all of those kind of things whereas now it's almost like if you there's so much out there it's hard to not copy it's hard to feel like you're good if you don't match up to everybody else because lots of people even I guess you know in air quotes an amateur can appear quite professional now yeah um whereas they weren't back then so I think there's um you know it's like a friend of mine said about parenting when I asked her you know certain things get easier when your kids get older and she said no it's a different set of problems I thought that was quite a good way of looking at it it's a different set of positives and negatives now than it was then I suppose like I, I don't think that now is better or then was better it was just different yeah and I think that because I've done it for so long I've definitely faltered along the way in feeling like I should be like other people to be successful or to be I'm not not successful but to be good or to have a blog that people wanted to read and I think now I've come full circle to just writing something that I want to write yeah and if people want to read it that's great but that's the way that I feel comfortable doing it and I think that I don't deviate from that because I feel so comfortable that I just like doing it yeah and and I don't feel the need to change it in any way you know or do things like back then everyone was doing like DIY posts and everything was very brightly colored and Mm -hmm. I sort of felt the need to go in that kind of direction direction um and now I just I think I'm much better at sort of you know blinkers on and doing what I, what feels right for me I think that's a journey that quite a lot of bloggers go on actually um that kind of journey of authenticity and um finding I hate I hate I hate the kind of finding your voice and finding your niche and all of that kind of crap but but like it is a journey that we all go on to get, no, get it really to the is. stage of and I think that um appreciating that it will change mm. there's so much I think that tells us we have to get to an end point in mm. life in our careers in our relationships in everything and the truth is that doesn't exist there is no end point there is no work to this point and you will have achieved everything it doesn't I think the realizing that everything is ever changing is very a good thing to think about because that's just the way it is just because my blog looks like this now you know it didn't look like that a year ago or two years ago and it probably won't look like that in two years Mm -hmm. because your life changes your um your passions often change your everything changes and hopefully I'll get better at what I'm doing and therefore it will look different so I think it's fine for everything to keep changing because I think that's healthy everything's a bit of a risk and a gamble and you kind of sometimes have to just try it out and hope for the best not worry too much that's totally what I find about um kind of parenting I know you know my kid's only 13 months so my experience is limited but having the confidence to try things there's so many things when people tell you what you should and shouldn't do Mm. or you read books or even your own parents will say oh you should do this should do this and you feel so scared at first that what you might do might damage your kid forever, <laughs> that you are so scared to do anything almost. Yeah. But having the confidence just to change different things, you know, give them some food. They might not like it. Oh, we'll do something different tomorrow. And that's OK. That's really good advice um, for me as well as for other bloggers. <laughs> um, so when you first start, just taking it back a little bit, when you first started out with your blog, um, what job were you doing? Yes, I was working, I had a brilliant job actually, I was working for a charity called St Margaret's House, which is based in East London, Mm -hmm. Um, and I was doing kind of a bit of everything for them really, I was managing all their events in the, they had this vegetarian vegan cafe kind of downstairs, Um, and I managed all the events in there, which was a brilliant job, and I dealt with like the volunteers and the internships, and kind of it was the kind of job where there weren't very many people working for the charity and I could basically do whatever I wanted Mm -hmm. so it was really great I could just get a project in my mind um, and go for it Um, we started a little cinema in the chapel we could just do anything we wanted and it was an amazing job um, but I didn't get paid very much Mm -hmm. and I was very young and didn't have the confidence to go for what I wanted and Mm -hmm. I felt that leaving that was the only 
choice really but anyway that was an amazing job best job I ever had I think um yeah I loved it when did you move to be to do what you're doing now because actually I don't people might not know but you do a couple of different things which I I found really interesting when I was researching you (laughs) stalking you (laughs) um because I actually found you through your knitting classes okay which is probably a different way to how Mm. most people find you I imagine it might be through your blog or through Instagram and through your photography I I mean I still don't know to be honest and I sort of feel a bit weird talking as if like I know things because I (laughs) don't really um I'm just sort of winging it in everything all of the time yeah um and whether it looks that way or not I'm not sure um but yeah I've always done lots of different things um I sort of I suppose I'm trying to dig down to the reason of why I do so many things um and I have always done it like that job was a prime example of something that suited me that I went in as one job and ended up doing 30 different things Mm -hmm. and I just loved it I really thrived on that um I left there went to South Bank Centre worked there for a couple of years I've always worked in the arts Mm -hmm. um worked in the digital team and um I should have gone for a better job and you know I got very bored and ended up leaving um it was a great place to work but you do get stuck in your little box doing one thing and that made me realize that doesn't suit me at all um I left there about four years ago and I worked for a theatre company doing tour booking tour management again lots of different things Mm -hmm. (laughs) digital marketing managing the interns kind of everything then as the company grew I ended up as their salesperson tour booker so I would manage all their sorry I talk very fast don't I no 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 it's fine um yeah I worked as their tour booker um across the UK and Europe so I'd work from home um lots of great people really good job um but when I went on maternity leave well before that really um I sort of knew that I wanted to transition during my maternity leave to working for myself yeah but I've been doing photography on the side um and getting paid for it for about the last four years Uh um just off and on trying to find my feet um doing a bit of everything again that's kind of my thing really yeah um and so it hasn't been, you know, oh, I went on maternity leave and I quit my job. That's not really the tagline for me. Yeah. It's like I worked very hard over a lot of years doing lots of different things, trying to figure it all out. Yeah. And event, you know, I feel like every year I hone it down slightly. And maybe when I'm 60, I will have hit upon, you know, the one thing that I'm, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> but this is the best I've got to really. I've, I've been teaching knitting for a couple of years as well. Just I used to teach it from my house to make a bit of extra cash. Mm-hmm. Um, and then while I was on maternity leave, I connected with a venue in North London. So I now teach all of their knitting classes. So yeah. sometimes I'm teaching two, three nights a week. Um, and then I also work with a venue in South London as well that I teach a couple times a month for them. Um, but I don't run any of my own at the moment yeah. because I just don't have the brain or life space to, to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do lots of different things and I'm constantly questioning uh, what I should be doing what's the right thing to do you know it is a constant juggling act and mm. um yeah so it, I do lots of things and I'm never really sure exactly how everyone finds me um I, I guess I just go with a bit of a zen approach and think that the right people will find me at the right time <laughs> I think that's the I think that's a really good way of looking at it actually <laughs> it's another thing that I think for new bloggers or um instagrammers or whatever you see as being super successful uh, wanting to emulate that I've been really interested in authenticity for a bit of a while now in my because it's something that I question in myself and etc cetera, etc cetera. but that whole getting followers quick um, on your blog it on Instagram on Twitter whatever whatever your kind of thing is um, finding your people it's finding your tribe isn't it I yeah. think it, that's the most important thing and let or really letting is. them find you um because it really is and I think that not overthinking it you know mm. like being in it being in it for the right reasons you know number one you've got to love what you do you've got to love it and you can't take the kind of pictures that you think are popular or talk to the kind of people you think you should if you don't love it because yeah. it's not it's not real and not only will other people feel that but you will burn out and you'll stop loving it and you'll question why you do it and that's not to say that that all of us don't go through those phases I've been there for sure and I'm sure I'll be there again where you start doing something because you feel pressured to do it and not even it's necessarily a conscious pressure but you just slowly change a little bit of what you're doing 
and it, it feels dis you know there's a disconnect there yeah um and I think you know I definitely don't consider myself super successful at all I consider myself as someone that has just started something and just gone and gone and gone and not given up and where I will be in 10 years I've no idea but I honestly think that that's part of the key is just to keep going but everyone's got their different journeys I suppose some people do seem to get successful very quickly but I would say that anybody that you look at anyone anyone looks at people that I look at that you think are successful and you admire what they do I'm always shocked to find out the amount of work that goes Mm. on behind it you know there is no there's no magic and no shortcut (laughs) no there's no shortcut there's no magic and I catch myself saying it to people you know you're so talented and when people say it to me part of you is very flattered but part of you also thinks that it hides all of the hard work that you actually put in it's not really about talent it's about constantly working constantly honing what you're doing trying to get better challenging yourself putting yourself out there doing all of those things that scare you and just slowly day by day by day even if it doesn't feel like it you just get better yeah do you um, listen to the being the Bo- being boss? Um, podcast? Yeah, I love that. I yeah, love that because I, when you were saying that, it just I could just hear them saying like, "Do the work, do the work." Yeah, and it's hard. <laughs> you know, I put, a, put, I put a post up on my Instagram a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was something to that effect, I suppose. Like, just keep going, going, going. Mm-hmm. And most people were commenting saying, "Oh, this is exactly what I need to hear. Thank you." And one girl actually commented, uh, which gave me a lot of food for thought she said that she actually wasn't trying to be negative but she felt like that message was hard for her because she felt like like you can feel like you're going and going and going and not getting anywhere yeah. and that actually she feels like you need sort of to measure your progress and set goals and challenge yourself and do all of those things which is true it is true and it is a complicated message to send to people I suppose um but I guess it's meant as an encouragement you have to just keep doing what you're doing and assess it along the way but you can't give up yeah because I think there's this myth I still think it of people that I really admire there's this myth that people that you admire feel comfortable in what they're doing yeah that you know every time they go out and take a photo they think I've nailed it in one shot and I'm so good (laughs) they don't think that they still take bad pictures they still do things that feel uncomfortable in fact they always do and that's what makes them so good and I always think, God, I feel so nervous about this or I feel so uncomfortable about this and constantly judge myself and think that that means I'm not good. Yeah. But it's actually turning that around and realising that is the very thing that makes you good because the day you get up and think, I'm amazing, I've nailed it, that's the day that you stop doing anything of any note whatsoever. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to uh, come to the realisation of, I suppose, mm. because we all want to get to this magical land where we think we're wonderful and it doesn't <laughs> exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't, no, right. No. If it's... you're lucky, it exists, you know, one day in every month you get exactly. that moment and then yeah. you take yourself out for coffee and you celebrate the hell out of yourself because the next day you're going to feel like you're terrible again, for sure. <laughs> yes. You know, it, it is true. a magical fairyland that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. You do have to go, I'm afraid of that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And you, I do it now, you know, I'll email someone, even if it's someone that I just want to meet for coffee and have a chat with, or it's maybe a brand that I want to work with, mm-hmm. or something like that, and I email them. And, you know, I'll I'll agonise over it for weeks, sometimes months. I'll send them an email, and in, within half an hour, they'll reply and go, yeah, sure. And I'm like, I don't know why I told yeah. myself all of those <laughs> things. I don't know what I expected. But it's those little inner voices, you know, we all have them. Yeah. We all have to figure out ways through them. We all struggle some days when we can't move through them. And I think it's just accepting that everybody, no matter who you are, goes through all of the same things. Mm-hmm. Just the more you move on, you know, now I can look back and say, well, I've kept doing this for such a long time. Or now I have pictures or clients or things that make me feel like, well, I was proud of that picture or that yeah. person wanted to work with me, which means I must be doing something right. So I think you have to actually write down and tell yourself the things that are true to balance the things you tell yourself that aren't true. That's actually a really, really good practical bit of advice as well, to write down your achievements so that you can remind yourself of them when you're wanting to do something scary. Definitely, because we don't tell ourselves those things. We just forget and we talk to us you know you wouldn't have a friend that talks to you the way you talk to yourself <laughs> yeah, because you'd so be true. like you're a massive you're the worst <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop calling me um yeah so I think you sometimes have to check yourself and stop telling yourself and I am telling you this but I'll you know I'll continue to yes. all of the things I'm saying that you shouldn't um but I guess it is about trying to have those strategies and um 
uh, Sarah from me and Orla had a really good blog post the other day about things you should do when you just feel a bit negative, really yeah. feel a bit down. And I think that is good is that those people have those coping mechanisms, you know, and I'm sure she has days where she can't move past it. Yeah. But the fact that she develops those things to say, right, I'm feeling really rubbish today. So let's do 10 things that are going to make me feel better, you know, little wins. Yeah. Um, and I think that when you start to turn a negative feeling into something more positive, that's what keeps you going. And that what's that's what makes fear and all those negative things actually drive you rather than stop you. She's a massive inspiration to me. And I presume you've mentioned her so to you too who else yeah, on your blogging journey or in the kind of blogger sphere or oh god I should have done some research for this <laughs> so I should um... have ta- I should have uh, mentioned it to you beforehand that probably would have been helpful <laughs> well I don't know because there's some people sort of in the beginning I guess that inspired mm. me so much that now don't do so much anymore so they inspired me to start I think now that inspire me to continue, I mean, definitely Sarah is one of them because of her approach to, I think, creativity in Mm. general. Um, And I guess the way she talks about something like Instagram as being a bit of a game that you have to play, because that's, again, a lot of people talk to themselves in thinking, well, I keep doing this thing and I can't be successful. And she is very good at saying, well, here are some things that you can do to give yourself the edge. Yeah. So I think she's very inspirational in that way. Um, I have a friend called Freya Dowson. You might know her on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she's just at Freya Dowson. Um, she's a friend of mine I know through blogging. Um, she's someone who definitely pushes herself through a lot of fear and puts in the hours and works hard. And I think that's very inspirational because she isn't someone, I guess because I know her personally, you know, you know when you see people's Instagram and blog that you think are wonderful, but you know the stories behind it. Yeah. You know how hard someone works to do that. Yeah. Um, you know how much they push them, and that's really inspiring to me. Um, and someone I've loved for a very long time on Instagram and blogging is a girl named uh, Lini. She's just at a girl named Lini. She's a knitter and a photographer and just a very creative person. And she is just very honest with the way she talks about things. And she just inspires me a lot just with her creativity and the way she just talks about things. She's a very genuine person. Um, so, yeah, I guess rather than mentioning too many specific names, it's people who are just really genuine. Yeah. Make make genuine connections, do beautiful work and put it out there despite any fears that they might have. Have you made any kind of connections in real life from your Instagram friends because I think Instagram more than any other social media for me has been a bit of a game changer in terms of um yeah making proper community like real there are people that I chat to every day on Instagram that I feel like oh yeah they're my friend but you know I've never met them yeah it's weird isn't it Mm. it's really weird but kind of amazing as well yeah, loads of people. I mean, I think that's the benefit of living in London is that so many people that I do connect with, well, you're another, you live in like uh, the other side of London to me, but yeah. not very far away. Um, and so even from the days of blogging, um, I actually know quite a few people that I still meet up with now who, you know, I follow on Instagram, but we kind of met through blogging and we meet regularly every month and hang out. And, you know, I forget that they're even my friends through blogging or Instagram because they're such a big part of my life. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, people I meet all of the time, actually. Almost every month I'll maybe meet someone for coffee off Instagram. Um, People that I connect with in different ways. Um, Often, embarrassingly, it's people approaching me because I'm too scared to approach other people, (laughs) which is just stupid. Um, Yeah, so it's because they want to chat about, you know, motherhood or photography Mm -hmm. or, you know, just we feel like we've got a connection through what we share. Well, I've I've already penciled you in my diary for taking pictures when the baby comes <laughs> Brilliant. so that's also April <laughs> that would be amazing well it's just amazing that you can kind of meet people you know yeah I want to kind of uh, tout my wares I suppose like that I am a photographer but I think the fact that I put so much else out there is an asset because yeah. people feel a connection with you yeah. and often I will photograph families or portraits of people I've met I actually I get most of my work through Instagram oh, really? because people they feel an affinity with you as a creative person because you have a, a baby mm-hmm. um and that's really great to work with people like that sometimes I'll even photograph people for their business and then I'll photograph them on the family side with their baby and that's really cool too that there's two sides of that which is something I'm very passionate about you know women still being able to yeah 
figure out how to do what they love whilst they have a baby. Yeah, me too. How has that changed things for you, motherhood? Because Rory, but 13 months, did you say? Yeah, 13, 13 months. months. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. She's Mega pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> she's very, very cute. <laughs> she's nuts. But she's amazing. She makes me laugh a lot. How has that shaped your creativity? And Oh, your... it's changed everything. Absolutely everything. I was very naive in thinking it wouldn't change things and almost not wanting it to change things. Mm. But now I'm on the other side of it. I can't imagine not having her. I can't imagine where I would be without her, mm-hmm. you know, without her to drive that. I think... Oh, there's so much that goes into it, really. There's the fact that I don't have a lot of time is that, you know, instead of getting eight hours a day to work, I have chunks. Maybe I have three hours a day while she naps to work. I get more done in three to four hours than I used to in eight hours because I have very small chunks and you have to get something done and you can't overthink it. You just have to go for it. Yeah. Um, So it's definitely made me more efficient. I think it's made me braver, too, because I want to be someone that she's proud of. And so I want to push myself because I want her to look back when she's older and think, yeah, like my mum did that when I was little. And, you know, or maybe she comes on shoots with me or I don't know. I just want her to be proud of me. And that really drives me to work through my fear because I don't want her to think, oh, but mum, you tell me to live my dreams and you just sit at home all day and don't do that because you're too afraid. I think I want to say, look, I was afraid and I had you and it was hard, but I did it anyway. Yeah. So that really pushes me as well. Um, and I think that it's just made me, it's given me focus on what I really want to do because I don't have eight hours a day to waste, yeah. to do anything. I have very small amounts of time for her, for my partner and our family, for me, for work, for all of these things. So you have to cut out the things that just don't add value to any area of your life. So I think that's really made me, my life is so much fuller but fuller of joy rather than full of just you know (laughs) stuff exactly and that that spreads to the stuff in my house to the work Mm. that I do to the people that I hang out with yeah it's everything so it's like your life feels so much richer it's probably all just massive cliches but yeah she's really changed everything and I'm not going to pretend that it's easy Mm. trying to fit that around a baby sometimes you know you have the best day and you get three or four hours worth of work and you cook and the house is clean and you think oh I'm so good at this I'm and nailing it the back how brilliant you are. <laughs> and then the next day you know you you can't even dress yourself until three o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon and you don't know how you're going to function yeah and that's just the way it goes it is those ups and downs and that's motherhood that's working for yourself that's life in general but, yeah but yeah for me it's a positive thing and I know that a lot of people before they have a baby it is like almost like you're standing on the edge of this big chasm Mm. and you don't know what's there and it is weird being on the other side of that remembering the way that I felt but for me it's been nothing but positive you know it has been hard and there have been lots of tough moments but on the flip side of that there's just been so much love so much happiness so much clarity so much motivation to keep doing what I love despite all of the other fears Um, And that's been brilliant, I think. What has been the most helpful um, lesson you've learned through blogging? Um, It's quite a loaded question, isn't it? Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, I think because it's easy to say, you know, that the biggest lesson has been just to do what you love and be you. But that's so that's what everybody says. And that's very hard to do. And I think looking back at when I started, you know, I'm 32 now, so it's too early for maths, but, you know, I was pretty young when I started doing it all. And I think that that goes hand in hand with your 20s. I -hmm. spent a lot of my 20s just quite insecure, as a lot of people do, not really sure of my style uh, in anything. And I think that it, that ageing is probably the thing that's benefited me the most. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that just ageing makes you realise who you are a bit more yeah and I think that when you're 23 24 you don't really know and I definitely didn't have a clue who I was um and so you're very easily led because you don't know yeah whereas now my life's much more sort of neatly packaged I suppose and it doesn't change as much from year to year even though you know having a kid is a massive change sort of what I do every day you know I've been with my partner for eight years I've lived in the same house for five years yeah whereas back then I was moving house every year you know you change jobs a lot everything's very different 
doing what you love, like really digging down to what is it that you love to do, um, writing that list. And, you know, is it that you love to travel or do you love to read or do you love to cook? And not feeling like just because everybody else is saying they love to travel, if that's not you and you just like staying at home, then that's what you should write about. No, I think that's a, it's a really good answer because um, I find that there's quite a lot of courses and, you know, e-courses, but also coaching courses and quite expensive ones that I yeah. know I started out in travel blogging and there's, there's a lot of people out there who will tell you, follow this, this, this prescriptive kind of formula and yeah. you will end up like this, which took me a really really long time at the beginning because again I was insecure and etc etc it took me a really long time to come to the realization that actually I don't really care like my idea of success doesn't look like the idea of success at the end of the neatly packaged exactly. course so well, I, that's the thing is boiling down success what does success mm. mean like for me I want to do what I love and take great pictures and work as a photographer and I keep reminding myself that that as much as you know I'd be lying if I said I didn't want 500,000 Instagram followers and you know <laughs> doing all of that stuff well actually the main thing that I want is to connect with really great people to make meaningful connections with people to take really great pictures to inspire myself hopefully to inspire other people and just mainly number one I do it because I enjoy it I have to keep remembering that and that's kind of my guiding light whenever you know I get an email saying do you want to do this with this brand or something I say no to more things than I ever say yes to yeah because if it doesn't feel right yeah um and it doesn't align with any of those things you know I think do I want that product would I enjoy doing that no yeah. and then I say no and I think I mean that that probably better answer for your other question actually sorry is that's a lesson that I've learned is say no when it yeah. doesn't feel right just do what's right because that's it depends what your success is you know my version of success is not being rich or famous or any of those things mm -hmm. my version of success I suppose is just waking up every day and feeling happy and inspired um, yeah and that that is my version of success which means well I've, I've done it yeah and that's great because then you just work on that you're not constantly chasing this oh if I just had 10,000 more followers yeah. and I'm not you know I'm not going to pretend that I don't check my follower account and love it when it goes up because everybody does <laughs> of course, but yeah. that's not the be all and end all of yeah. everything for me it's about you know it's more about can I check my feed and am I proud of the pictures am yeah. I proud of the people I connect with that's the number one thing for me same with my blog yeah, I, I completely agree. It's quite similar for me. And in terms of brand partnerships, I think when I I mentor some kind of newbie bloggers, it's one of the things I do. And almost universally, what people want to know is how do you work with brands? How do you work with brands? Um, and I totally get it. I completely get it. And I don't judge it at all. But one of the best lessons I've learned, similar to you, is saying no. Like, if it feels a bit icky... And you feel like you're going to really struggle to promote them. <laughs> just say yeah. no. It's just not worth yeah. it. It's not It's not worth it. And sometimes they want to send you something that, you know, costs 50 quid or less. And the work you're going to put in for them mm. is so much. And I think, I mean, how, again, being older and I suppose having a kid and less time, my criteria for everything is very uh narrow is that the right way to yeah it? yeah you know for me it has to be the brands I work with which I don't really work with any hardly any um is you know they have to be ethical I like things that are made in Britain mm -hmm. I like things that there is a purpose for because I don't just like having stuff yeah um and I don't like promoting people who are just selling stuff so I think for me, that's why I say no to so many things. And that's why I don't do a lot of things, because it has to be meaningful for me. It has yeah. to align with all of my um, values. Uh, you, It's not about the quick buck, you know. You've got to look forward into the future and, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, to anybody who does want to work with brands, etc., obviously, it's totally all good. But it is about just knowing your own worth, I think before yeah, you just say yes to everything and knowing you know that those brands don't care I mean I'm really shocked mm. when I see Instagram accounts that have maybe 50,000 followers they are bloggers full-time and they work with all these brands and you look at their likes and their comments and I get more than them and I've got yeah. what, about 4,000 and something followers yeah. but a brand would look at mine and be like oh, no you're not you know you're not 
big enough account for me. Well, that's actually a really but, interesting thing that you touch on because engagement really is the key to, ev- to exactly. everything. And- but the brands, most of them, the big brands anyway, they don't care. Mm. So I think it is, and I and fine, if, if I think if that's your goal, that you want to be a blogger full time and you don't care about any of the other stuff, then that's what you go and do and that's fine. Yeah. But there are so many people that are caught in the middle that they want that, but they want the stuff that's real as well. Yeah. And I think that it's very difficult to have both. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to have both so you have to really decide what your core values are and stick with those above everything like even when it feels like you're not getting anywhere you just have to stick with those yeah um because yeah I just think yeah those brands don't care they don't pick people that they think have a great engagement or massive ethics they just think can I take a nice picture and will you share it out to your 50,000 Instagram followers who don't even see the picture and can I put it on my spreadsheet and say that I've ticked tick my task exactly. off for the month of exactly. reaching out to and, an influencer you know are the bosses going to check are they <laughs> yeah. going to come back and say is that PR outreach blogger outreach yeah. person you know are they getting a return on the investment they're probably not going to check yeah. but it is about that person showing up and working eight hours and contacting all these bloggers and saying these are all the features that I've got yeah and for me it's all meaningless yeah it means nothing I think it's about doing stuff you know do stuff make mistakes yeah. and I mean one of my favorite quotes is uh a Woody Allen quote that says if you're not making mistakes then you're probably not doing anything very interesting yeah, and that's, that's so always true. stuck with me and I, I think that and that's how I teach when I teach knitting I, everyone is so afraid even after 10 minutes of making a mistake I'm always like you've knitted for 10 minutes of course you're going to make mistakes like get rid of that fear of making mistakes because that is how you learn it's fine to make a mistake and go oh I really screwed up then like I totally sold out and I feel a bit dead inside because of that I'm not going to do that again I think you know well, I've made a million mistakes and that's how I learn things is because I mess everything up and I'm okay with that because, you know, I won't mess it up twice. I'll mess it up once, I'll move on and I'll not do that again. I wanted to ask you a little bit about photography and how you, how do you find inspiration? Oh, I could talk about it this all day, I think. Brilliant, um, do. <laughs> well, well, I mean, there are some tricks, I would say. Like, I have um learnt how like I'm still sharing pictures I shared one this morning that I think I took a month and a half ago Mm -hmm. um I when I was away the other week in Northumberland I took lots of pictures so I do things that work for me so I don't really have time to take pictures every single day I try to keep them as relevant as possible and I generally don't really like posting things that I took a long time ago unless there's a particular reason for it because it feels a bit out of kilter for me yeah um but I definitely will batch shoot things um and save them all and that makes life a lot easier for me um sometimes I do things like I will force myself to go out and take pictures sometimes like you know in the winter when it was a really frosty morning I Mm. didn't particularly want to go out and freeze my bits off in the park at you know 7 38 <laughs> o'clock in the morning but that's part of I guess because I come from being a photographer yeah as well I find that easier and that, that brings up I mean a whole other discussion of you know are people that use iPhones photographers and all of that well yeah which, short answer I think yes but there's a lot of snobbery about that anyway there that's is, another yeah. story um <laughs> I because I guess I've been a photographer for a very long time ever since I was a kid yeah so for me you know I do understand that you have to get out and force yourself and get the light and take those pictures and just naturally I do that anyway on holiday I go out and I take pictures and I disappear from everybody for hours and take pictures so I guess I find the inspiration to take pictures comes very easily to me yeah because I love it and I recently actually switched to using um, only pretty much only DSLR shots from my Canon uh-huh. on I, um, my Instagram uh-huh. because I was struggling with inspiration to shoot with my iPhone oh really and I know some people love it and some people like mm. that it's you know it's not very technical and the iPhone 7 camera is amazing and can do a lot of things, but it just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. And you know, Instagram has changed, and I do sort of feel a bit like I'm cheating, but I'm a photographer, and I'm trying to get people to hire me, and they don't hire me for my iPhone shots. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but then you look at someone like, again, Sarah Me and Orla, um, she, you know, her iPhone shots are amazing and so creative, but she gets inspired to be creative with her iPhone, yes. and I don't yeah. feel that. Whereas with my SLR, that excites me because it's what I do for work as well. The more I practice with it, the more I love it. You know, sometimes I still do iPhone shots because I find that they they do different things. Um, and, you know, I'm sure I will sort of learn to love shooting iPhone again. Yeah. But there are days when I don't feel inspired. Um, there are days when I just don't have the time. And 
I guess I just try and get a little bit better like I try and batch shoot I definitely try to shoot some portrait things wherever I am um I mean like portrait orientation because they look better on Instagram yeah so I am conscious of some things that I try to shoot for Instagram but I don't try and be perfect I don't I mean this morning was an example of not really having anything perfect to share um it wasn't really the right picture for Instagram but I really liked it and I yeah. kind of put it up anyway because it doesn't matter There's, because again I suppose the interaction with people and the consistency is more important yeah and um, to keep that going so it's not a perfect system by any means but I do try and sometimes I do force myself sometimes you know my kid's napping and I just want to go for a sleep and I force myself to spend you know an hour in the house trying to take pictures of my house or plants or yeah. you know self-portraits or something so it doesn't it doesn't always come easily But then sometimes, like, when I'm on holiday, that does come easily because I can just disappear for a couple of hours and go and take a bunch of pictures. Yeah. And I will often get 30 out of those to use on Instagram, and that's brilliant. Um, Sometimes I feel like, you know, the need for capturing things for Instagram or the want to do it actually inspires me to get out Mm -hmm. and use my camera. So, no, that's, again, a really rambling answer. But it's it's a mixture of everything between inspiration coming naturally, me forcing myself out, and sometimes... I don't have time or inspiration and I don't put a picture up and it's fine. Uh, and I think that's a, that's really good to know as well because sometimes you're not inspired and sometimes you just have to do the work. <laughs> yeah, and again, that is easier with a baby. I mean, there's a lot of things that are harder with a baby, but just doing the work, I don't have a choice. Yeah. I don't have a choice. There's no other way. Like, I have an hour, I have an hour and a half. Yeah. I have to get it done. And that is something, honestly, I sort of wish I'd had that 10 years ago because <laughs> I would have been unstoppable, you know. I can't sit for three hours and go on Facebook and do all of those yeah. things, you know, because I don't have time. So I yeah. just have to get out and do it. Or I have an hour or two when my partner or somebody is around to watch Rory, my daughter, um, and then I have to go and take some pictures. Or sometimes she's with me and she's asleep or perfectly happy and then she decides no your time is over and I and I have to stop so I'm sort of aware all of the time that she could wake up at any minute and I've got to just get it done and that is something that we could all do a little bit of yeah <laughs> do with a little bit of I think I think having the constraints there can force you to prioritize I definitely procrastinate sure. way too much during I could I could get a lot more done during the day but um because I had because I don't need to, <laughs> I don't, which is terrible. But, yeah, um, well, because you think, oh, I have tomorrow, I have this afternoon. Exactly, you know? yeah. I don't have this afternoon, I don't have tomorrow, yeah. I don't have any time, I've got now, I've got the next hour. And But sometimes, you know, I spend a couple of hours shooting and I get nothing that's good. And that doesn't mean that I'm a bad photographer. It means, you know, it wasn't my day or it's yeah. not happening today. Or And again, I think it's experience. It's the more I do it, the more I learn well, I took great pictures yesterday, so just because I can't today is fine. Yeah, it doesn't and make you And you sort of crap. learn what works and what doesn't. <laughs> exactly. And just, you just have to keep going, really, and figure out what works for you, what times of day. And I mean, the rain, the grey, like, that's kind of my jam. I love yeah. that. I don't like really <laughs> shooting in sunlight. And so the grey days are perfect for me. Yeah. And With your writing, um, do you write for other people as well as yourself? Um, yeah, I'd love to write a bit more for other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I found it hard, though, actually. It was the first time I'd written for anybody else in a long time. And I was writing in a very sort of article format. Mm. It wasn't like an opinion piece or it was just, you know, I did this and here's what I thought of it. Um, I had to sort of not put in, like, the sarcasm or the things yeah. that I was sort of very comfortable made me realise how comfortable I am in writing like me. Yeah. I think I've learnt to write how I speak. Yeah. And it's difficult when I feel like I have to write, I have to take, like, copyright, essentially. I'm not really a copywriter. Yeah. would like to write more for other people, um, and I hope to do more of it. But at the moment, mainly just for myself. Yeah. Really. And I suppose that, well, for me, writing for myself is where I get the most joy, um, which is kind of why I, I never wanted... I, well, I did at the beginning and then realised quite quickly that I didn't want to be a full-time prof- professional in inverted commas travel, uh, travel blogger or blogger because as soon as you put those kind of constraints in and then start having to think, I'm doing, I have to write this for this reason, for this much traffic, work with this brand, X, Y, Z, um, it kind of took the joy out of things for me. Yeah, exactly. And that's a perfect example of doing things and then realising, well... I didn't feel great about that, mm. and why didn't I? And then you can... But, you know, also sometimes, like, I try and take on photography jobs that really inspire me, but the reality is that, you know, I'm quite new to this, and they don't all come along all the yeah. time. 
So I have to sometimes, I either have to say, well, I need a bit of money, so I have to do something that I don't love. Yeah. And now I've learned that if I do a shoot that isn't exactly what I want, then I just don't share it. So no one will ever hear about it. Yeah. And guarantee that a lot of photographers and writers that everybody likes also do that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm surprised when I talk to photographers that inspire me and they say that because I assume that they don't do it but that's not true yeah um so there is a lot of that sometimes you have to do things that don't come easily to you and that aren't great because you need the exposure or you need the money or you need the contact or something yeah um it's just it's not you you know even people that seem like they have it figured out no one really has it figured out it's just a case of trying stuff and seeing what works and yeah and then you get to the place where now like you can say yeah I love writing for myself that's the primary thing that I like to do and then you figure out how to do more of that and how to maybe get paid to do that whereas previously you were trying to get paid to write for other people so that's the flip side is on that you know so it is all trial and error and that's the excitement because all of our businesses are different all of our blogs are different or they all look different because there is no one there is no one way to be a writer or to be a photographer or to be this you know the you can do whatever you want and you know I I can only because I am a full-time mum I can't shoot every day Mm -hmm. so for me I I can't be a full-time photographer and actually I can be fairly selective about what I do because I only I only try and shoot about one day a week um so that's how my business looks at the moment but someone else's business doesn't look like that so it is about trying to figure out what is right for you yeah where can everybody find you? Obviously, I know where to find you, and I'll link to <laughs> <laughs> Not if that sounded really threatening. If they're not hugely put off by all of my <laughs> long rambling answers to all of your questions. <laughs> Absolutely not. I can't imagine they will. And um, I'll put it all in the show notes as well. But Amazing. where so, can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Siobhan Watts, which is on Twitter <laughs> at Siobhan Watts. Um, and my blog is bless the weather so bless the weather.com perfect and what kind of things are you um, working on at the moment I think honestly I'm just trying to work on continuing to work (laughs) that's mainly what I'm working on (laughs) and I honestly sit down every single day and go right what now most of the time (laughs) Um, uh, yeah I'm just winging it thanks for listening to what she said And if you like this episode or any of the other episodes, please think about giving me a lovely rating on iTunes. I really appreciate it. If you want to connect with me, head over to my blog, wanderloose.com, or hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, or Pinterest, where I'm at wanderloose blog. 